Hi guys, so I was doing some admin work with the channel today and it suddenly dawned on me that I haven't really explained what my aims and goals with the thing are. I've been doing it for about three weeks now and I think having a reasonable amount of success, but I suddenly saw that there was nothing really explaining where I've kind of come from or where I want the channel to go, the things that I'm working on and that kind of stuff. So this is going to be a little update on what I'm actually doing on the YouTube and sort of admin side of things. So if you're looking for a Lotus or car related update, uh, there is going to be some Lotus related information in here, but I'm afraid no Lotus in this video today because it's currently at Strat Motor Company having some more work done that will be in a future video. So if you're looking for Lotus stuff, skip this video. Well, if you're still here, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the aim with the channel was, what the channel's doing right now, and what I hope it's going to do in the future. So the channel really started out of my frustration, if nothing else. When I was looking at a car, I knew that the Evora was pretty high on my list, and the 400 specifically, and despite the fact that it is a brand new car from a, I suppose, reasonably sized manufacturer, uh, Lotus do make stuff in a sort of volume that a lot of guys don't, you know, they're much bigger than Morgan, for example, there was basically no information about the car out there. There was a few reviews and things, which were all positive, which is great, but there was nothing on what the car was like to live with. And not just that, okay, the 400 is a brand new car, so there may not be as many videos of that type, but there was also pretty much nothing on the original Evora either. And that car is now about seven years old. So I kind of thought, well, gee, if there's other people in my situation and they're looking for information, it's actually pretty hard to find. Okay, you can go onto the forums and things like that, but not everybody does that, not everybody likes going on the forums, and people often prefer to watch video-type material and go on YouTube and see stuff, and sometimes the way YouTube works, you, know, you can get linked from one thing to another that you weren't expecting to, and that way you can sort of consider things that you previously hadn't considered, and yada, 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 yada. But it just frustrated me that there was this car out there that was so brilliant from a brand with a really amazing history and a great heritage, but was basically unknown and unpublished and really, really underserved in the media generally. You know, if you want to know what it's like to live with an Audi R8 or a 911 or a Ferrari or a Mercedes or an M3 or anything, you know, there's probably more information out there on like a 25-year-old car like the Audi Quattro or something, than there is about the Evora 400. So that I thought was a real shame, and I thought, well, as I am supposed to be a cameraman by trade, I have all the tools at my disposal, more or less, to rectify that situation. So I kind of felt that I should do that. So that's the start of the channel, is I've basically been trying to give both my opinion on the car as well as as many as I can facts about what it's like to live with, what it's like to drive, and so on and so forth. Um, in that regard, there will be much more content coming soon. I'm trying to broaden my content as well. A Confucius once said, YouTube channel cannot survive on single model alone, and I think he's right. Now, the 400 obviously is a great car, and I love it because I own it, but I want to diversify. Now I'm starting by diversifying within Lotus. So to that end, I'm doing things like the owner profiles. I've done one of those already and I've got several lined up. I want to talk to not just Evora owners, but Elise, Exige and legacy model owners as well. So to get their story, how they wound up with the brand. You know, some of these guys are serial Lotus owners. Some of them are new time people, you know, like myself, they've been with other brands or, you know, they've been big German car fans and for whatever reason, they've kind of come to Lotus. So I want to show their stories because maybe you can relate. And, you know, I'm, I don't really see myself as a Lotus guy. I don't see myself as a BMW guy. I don't see myself as a Porsche guy. I see myself as a car guy. Now I know on the forums in particular, you'll get a lot of people that are sort of diehard kind of specific mark mad guys that, you know, anything else is just crap and they couldn't be doing with it, you know, if it's not this, if it's not their favourite brand, it must be total shit. Well, I like all kinds of different cars, you know, I like steam cars from the teens, you know, I love 
you know, super hyper cars from McLaren and Ferrari. And, you know, I love the Lotus stuff and I love a lot of Porsches and BMWs. And, you know, I can even have fun in crappy little French things like this van that I'm sat in right now, which by the way, I'm sat in because my neighbors have dogs over that are barking. One of them is doing their gardening and has a head strimmer out. And it was basically the quietest place I could find to record this video. It's also a place that I spend a lot of time when I'm not in the Lotus. It's a baking hot day today, and I don't even have air conditioning in this car, and I haven't even got the engine running for a fan because I want the sound to be good for the video. So such is my dedication to the channel. I wasn't really sure when I started this quite how successful it was going to be, and honestly, I don't really know what figures to judge against, but when I checked this morning, I had over 200 subscribers and fast approaching nine or 10,000 views for my videos combined, which I am super happy about. And I've had a lot of interaction and feedback from you guys, the viewers, and I'm really, really thankful. Whenever anyone comments, I will always read it. I try and take stuff on board. Um, I reply where I can and where appropriate. And generally, I'm just really, really happy with the interaction I'm having with the community at the minute, um, because ultimately, it's the support that I get from you guys that is going to make me keep producing this kind of content. So content coming up in the near future, we have as already discussed the owner profiles. I also want to do a few more sort of Evora versus videos. And as with the Ferrari, I'm not going to make it the sort of obvious comparisons that you might think, because... Basically, I can't get a hold of a new 911. If there is someone out there that has a 991 that doesn't mind me driving it, give me a shout, I'll come and drive it. You can have a go of the Lotus. So I'm gonna be comparing the car against things like an old M3. I'm gonna try and get a hot hatchback, that kind of stuff. Have a little bit of fun you know, at the end of the day. I also wanna do some more reviews on different cars as and where I can get access to them. Okay, so the particularly eagle-eyed among you may have noticed a very slight change in camera angle and position there. Uh, the reason for that being that it is so warm outside that after only eight minutes of recording inside the van, my camera overheated and shut down. So I'm now filming from my fridge. The things I do. Uh, that brings me on to another topic, which is the title of the channel, which officially is Cars, Cameras and Movies, because the three things that I'm interested in are cars, cameras and movies. Now, thus far, all that I've really talked about is cars, and that's probably going to be the core of the channel. However, because I am a, a cameraman by trade, I do have access to some very, very interesting and fun bits of camera kit, so there'll be a separate playlist that I'll be working on soon, and when it comes winter time and there's less car content around, I'll probably ramp that up. So for camera geeks and photography guys out there, there's going to be a few little videos showing you about some of the fun kit that I get to play with in my professional life. I will also do some reviews of some interesting and unusual movies. I have basically no intention of reviewing every single film that I see because I see a lot and that will just take up all my time. Because of where I am at the minute, shooting and editing a video is fairly quick but uploading takes forever. So I'm very, very careful about what I upload and do. Now that brings me on to another topic which is the frequency of videos and kind of the intent of them. Now there's quite a few bits of car content out there already on YouTube and I'm well aware of those and I've been very very careful when making my own content that I want to do things just a little bit differently because there's no point in trying to copy the guys that are already out there. They're very successful, they're very popular and I'm happy for them to do their own thing and I do enjoy some of the content that they put out there. That being said there's a few things that I always want to try and do on my channel. I would like to try and make stuff to the highest technical possible quality that I can. For that reason, many of my videos are uploaded in UHD and nearly all of them are uploaded in HD where it's relevant. You know, if you don't need UHD, I'm not going to bother because it takes so long. So I also want to try and present things on camera as much as I can. That's why I try and bring a cameraman with me because if I'm presenting and talking to you about a car, I don't like the kind of... I don't I don't like that look. I, I'm not, not fond of that look. I, I don't like the sort of man walks around with YouTube, you know, GoPro thing on his on his arm. It's it's not me. It's not the way I like to do things. I like to do things in a slightly more considered way, which does take longer to do and longer to put together and means that I often refilm stuff and reshoot stuff. But from the comments that I've had back, I think that you guys kind of appreciate what I'm doing with that and trying to make stuff to a slightly higher standard. I also want to focus a little more on some of the engineering side of the cars. Now, I'm certainly not going to challenge Engineering Explained, he's an actual engineer, I'm just a guy that's kind of interested in oily bits. But with some of the cars I'm looking at, there are things about them which are very, very interesting from a technical and engineering perspective, and I want to sort of go into those more, 
This is never going to be a lifestyle blog. For a start, it's not a particularly interesting lifestyle. I mean, here I am staring at a camera in a fridge with some bacon. I do like bacon, but it's not a lifestyle blog, it's a car blog. I'm never going to do daily updates, my internet could not hack it and neither can I. When there's something interesting, it'll go up. I'm trying to put about two updates a week at the moment. That may be more, that may be less. We're coming up to car show season and we're going to be attending as many of those as I can. I have a few dates for you. If you're in the local area, I'm in East Anglia, I'm going to be going on a few different things there. And if you want to come and see me, meet me, please come up to me, talk to me. You know, I love talking to people about cars. That's why I'm on YouTube doing all this stuff. On the 14th, which is next Tuesday, there is a Pistonheads summer social meet. Uh, if you go to the Pistonheads website and go to Pistonheads East Anglia, you'll find information about that. That's at Snetterton. In the evening, there's a track day going on, but there's also a social bit there by Tyrrell's Cafe. I'm then going to a car show on the 12th, which is at Steeple Bumpstead, and is a Queen Elizabeth II uh, birthday bash thing. On the 18th, I believe I have been duped by Bibbs and Greg from the Lotus Forum into going down to the Village Fate in Ryash, which is Kent. And there'll be another 400 there, and also uh, I think Bibbs of the Lotus Forum is going to be there. Uh, otherwise, if you just happen to see me out and about or whatever, if you see the car, you know, come and talk to me and ask me stuff. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing it. I didn't buy a bright yellow, sleek, low supercar to be uh, shy about it. So that's kind of it for today. Sorry, it's a Lotus free update, but I hope that kind of gives people a bit of an idea about what's happening, where I'm going, things I'm doing, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you want to hear more about my car, I'm going to shoot a video right now, which is going to be a status update on my car and hopefully that'll be of a bit more interest to you and I promise after that it'll be straight back into the Lotus action driving fun stuff. Thanks now, bye.